Want to know the hidden meaning behind what women say and do? Then check out the Chictionary. It's the Wing Girl Methods manual that gives you a full rundown of all the things women say that confuse men written in dictionary format. Go get a copy of the Chictionary by going to winggirlmethod.com slash chick. That's winggirlmethod.com slash chick. Coming up on this week's episode of the Ask Women podcast, we have someone very special on our show, someone who is in touch with God, him slash herself. We have Rabbi Shmuel Pollen on the show who is going to be talking to us about how to get over rejection when you strike out. What are 10 things that you could do to make that striking out not seem as bad as it is? So keep listening. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Ask Women podcast. You're here, you made it back. Lovely to see you. Yes, I can see you. I'm your host, Kristen Carney, along with your other host, Marnie Kinris. And today we have something a little untraditional going on with our guest because it's a little bit like religion based. So we have rabbi, author, and all around awesome guy, Schmall. I know I say it wrong. Shmuel Pollen. You got it. Hey, hey, Rabbi. <laughs> okay. First, I just want to say thank you to Marnie and Kristen. I know I'm not a typical guest on the show, but you took a risk, and I appreciate that. Already paying off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My name is Shmuel Pollen. I'm a rabbi. I'm a lawyer, and I'm an author. Where did I come from? Let's rewind to sixth grade. I was a surfing, guitar-playing kid in sunny San Diego. And at my school, there was an anti-Semitic incident where somebody said they wanted to put me in an oven or a gas chamber or something like that, hearkening back to the Holocaust. And my parents freaked out, and it brought out their Jewish pride, and they said, we're going to put them in the most Jewish school possible. And it turned out to be a Hasidic school. Hasidic means they go beyond the letter of the law. And I stayed in Hasidic schools all the way until rabbinic ordination. So I got my rabbi degree. And I noticed that the Hasidic Jews, at least this sect of Hasidic Jews, are a lot happier than your average person. They dance a lot. Not with music, just spontaneous dancing for hours sometimes. You know why? You know why I think it is? Why? No jeans. (laughs) Jeans are very uncomfortable. (laughs) You guys got nice, loose, comfortable pants, and the women have nice, comfortable skirts. Who wouldn't be happy? Yeah, I think you're onto something. (laughs) <laughs> it's it's just a dress code issue. There's a crazy story that's like hard to believe, but Hasidic Jews were in Germany during the Holocaust, of course, and there was this one rabbi named Rabbi Isaac Horowitz, and his synagogue was set on fire, and he couldn't get out, and he knew he was going to die. And he took the Bible scroll that we have, and it's written very carefully, and he just danced and danced and danced with the Bible scroll until he lost his life. He was actually happy, even though he was about to go through torture and death. And I believe that if he can be happy with that, you can also be happy getting rejected by a girl. Ah, which is worse than a fire. (laughs) So tell us, why are these Jews dancing so much? (laughs) (laughs) Right. That's the question. So I think I found the answer in rabbinical college when I got to the advanced studies. They learn what's called the Kabbalah. And that's what you would call Jewish mysticism. It's the deeper dimension of the Bible. So the the Bible is compared to bread because you like need it to live, need it for a society to function, whether you believe in that or not. And Kabbalah is compared to wine because you don't need wine, but it makes you happy and it gives you, it gives a certain depth to life. And so does the Kabbalah. And the idea is, It's kind of deep. I don't know if you're ready for this, but God is a source of happiness and Kabbalah allows you to find God anywhere, even in an orange. We had on my podcast, a guy who did a whole thing about how you find God in an orange. You definitely have to peel it. I would say (laughs) step one. (laughs) 
This was what was making these guys so happy. And that's what I'm here to share. I want to share some of this Kabbalah wisdom so you can benefit from it in the form of more happiness and success. And today I'm going to apply that wisdom to exactly the topic of when you strike out with girls. Yeah. Well, let me jump in before you start because the whole dancing thing, that was just a little bit mind-blowing because it seems like something that's so obvious And so something that we should already know, like, yeah, if you dance, you're happy. But as soon as you said that, I pictured all the moments that I kind of break out into doing a little spin or doing something like with my feet. And it's always, always, always when I'm happy or in a good mood or something good just happened. I've never, ever, ever done that in a reaction to something negative. No. So it's like the happiness is, is, is like a it's like a liquid that overflows sometimes into your external organs. Right. And you just have to dance. And you just it's a happy dance. Yeah, I love that. So approaching this topic, and I had time to prepare for this interview, I'll admit I didn't know if there was anything in Jewish mysticism that directly talked about striking out with a girl. It gives general principles that we're gonna apply to that situation, which is great, but no explicit reference. But a few weeks ago, I happened upon a non-mystical text. It's about 2,000 years old. It's a debate between Greek philosophers and Jewish sages. And it directly addresses the situation of striking out with girls. It was 60 Greek philosophers against one Jewish rabbi. And the debate is very interesting because it's all in code language. It's just like 100% metaphors. It's all metaphors. And then all these medieval scholars have spilled so much ink on trying to understand what the debates really meant. But there's this one question that they asked that seems really clear and really relevant, and I think you'll like it. So the question was, if a bachelor comes into town and sets his eyes on a particular girl and she rejects him, what should he do? No. So there we go. Crazy. There we go. An ancient debate about getting rejected by a girl. So what does the rabbi say? He says, if you're hammering in a nail at a certain place and it's not going in, you raise the hammer and the nail to a higher place and then it will penetrate. Now, this has an obvious explanation that we could use. And that is that if you get rejected by a girl, you'd think you should lower your expectations. If I wasn't good enough for her, I'd probably deserve someone less worthy or less beautiful than her. But the true scholar says, on the contrary, raise the hammer, go for an even higher class woman, and you'll wind up with someone greater than anything you imagined. Don't lower your expectations, raise them. What do you think of that? That's interesting because I, I saw that a different way. I love way. that. Because I, I thought he was saying, like, just try harder, but with like greater force. So that's interesting that that's, that's how you viewed his response. But I like that's another, way to, that's another way to look at it. Another way to look at it is like raise yourself up, get better clothes, go to the gym, you know, raise yourself up and then it'll penetrate. Then you'll get the girl. But um, yeah, don't there's two stop ways, hammering. Two ways yeah, to look exactly. At. Don't stop hammering. You have something that you want to accomplish. I like that. Well, I hate to be the, you know, cheesy person who's like, you know, things are meant to happen and things happen for a reason. Like I hate that, but I do think you are rejected from who you may think is your ideal person or the prettiest person you could get because there is something better around the corner and it's forcing you to wait for that thing around the corner. Yes, I agree. So the bottom line is, what I'm talking about is that most guys fail a lot before they succeed. And that's true with any discipline. But the failure could lead them to giving up. And even if you don't give up, you could be down for days and that could disrupt your work and your family life and it's valuable days wasted. And so we need more than just the advice about the hammer. We need to enter in Jewish mysticism. How would the Kabbalah address this issue of striking out with girls? Now, when you learn Kabbalistic principles, what it does is it allows you to create happiness from the inside. So it's not based on your circumstances. Like when things go well, you're happy. And when they don't, you're not happy. When you have it from the inside, you can like turn your happiness on and off like a light switch. So, all right, let's talk about the strikeout. You hit on a girl and she says, I'm not interested. Or as I recently got, I'm only attracted to Asian guys. <laughs> she, she, she might say, 
why are you talking to me? Or she gives you a one or two word response while texting, or she just ghosts you completely and you walk back with your head in shame. Well, the Kabbalah says everything has a source. And our emotions, it says, are sourced in the, quote, original man or original woman. This is the man or woman you are before you actually express it. Today, they would call it your subconscious. But the Kabbalah knew about the subconscious millennia before Freud. The point is, there's an original man, and the original man has glasses that he can take on and take off. The glasses are your whole world view. If you have the glasses that the Kabbalah recommends, you'll be happy no matter what. If you have your default lenses or no lenses at all, you'll be happy only when things go your way. And then even then, you might not be totally happy. So any any comments? No, I love all of this. I have to go back to the chewel. (laughs) I love all these stories. I love listening to them. I think it's fantastic. Okay, this is going to blow your mind. Yeah. I'm going to quickly talk about some of these lenses that I'm referring to, the glasses that we wear. If your glasses are tainted red, for instance, you're going to see everything is red. Even if it's not red, you will believe that it's red after a while of wearing those glasses. That's how people work. So we all have like a lens or a glass through which we see the world. And the glass is always coated with something. And to a hammer, everything looks like a nail. We always skew our view based on the glass that we wear. We go our whole lives with these glasses on. And because we only have one lens that we wear, we're really getting subpar results. And you believe that what you thought is true when it wasn't true. It was just what you saw through your own lens. When you know all the lenses, then you can put them on and off. Whenever the case demands it, you become like a Superman. If you know about the superior lenses that coat our subconscious, we will stay happy and bounce back from any situation really easily. This won't even be completely new because you've fooled around with these lenses before, but you were never given them in a structured way so you can use them whenever you want. Now, for the audience, not you and Kristen, but for the audience, you might want to take notes. It gets a little involved. Are you going to tell us how to get those lenses? Yeah, I'm going to tell you exactly exactly what they are and how to put them on and how to live your life with them. Awesome. I love it. We'll just mute ourselves. Go. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, I'll just go. So the first lens that I want to talk about is called Essence. This is maybe the most important lens of all. Who are we? That's the question. Who are we? Darwin says our core is survival. Freud said our core is a pleasure-seeking animal. And Kabbalah says that your essence is a reflection of and is one with God. And if you don't want to call it God, if you're an atheist, call it perfection. Our core is totally perfect and totally untouchable, and it needs no validation, and it needs no rectification. It's essence because it's essentially valuable. A little hard to understand, but you'll get it. Craftsmen don't make things unless they love them. So God doesn't make people unless he has never-ending love for them as well. This love never changes. The symbol for this in math is a circle. So if you go to the center of a circle and make a line to any of the borders, it's going to be exactly the same length. So that represents God's love. It's always the same. It's just like a parent loves their kids even when they screw up. And how does this apply to dating? Because... It means no matter what happens, you're essentially valuable no matter what. So let's just talk about the opposite of this. The opposite is like what you guys call one-itis, where you've completely sold your soul out to another person and your happiness is totally dependent on them and you need them to fill yourself up. The opposite is like the essence. If you're essentially valuable... You'll have extreme confidence in yourself no matter what happens. No matter how badly I've been beat, it doesn't matter. My essence is totally unaffected. At my core is an untouchable perfection and value. Other ideas that come from people looking through the essence lens is like body positivity. No matter how big you get, there's an essence there. You should be loved and respected no matter what. That's the point they're making, and they're looking through the essence lens. Women who like to talk about a problem but don't want it solved, again, 
the problem doesn't phase them. They don't want it changed. They want it to be unchanged and they really want it to get into it the way it is. And because it's essentially valuable. Now, one more example, no, two more examples. Improv, when you do improv, no matter what you say, it works because it's an essence. The essence is unchanged. The whole idea of improv came from the essence lens. And so it's just, you can just say whatever you want and it's all good. It's all essentially valuable. And then finally, the left wing of politics started from the essence lens because it's saying that each person needs to be made sure they're taken care of by the government, no matter how lazy they are or how much they screwed up because they're essentially valuable. It's not a bad thing or a good thing. It's just the way it is. They're just looking at people from an essentially valuable standpoint. That's the essence lens. And if you look at the world through that lens, no girl rejecting you can ever get you down because you're a perfect, unchanging being. And then we have the opposite lens, which is called purpose. It's like a man I who wants to, to ask, solve... The- I wanted to ask one yeah. question before. So Go ahead. how do you put those lenses on if you're at this place where you're beaten down, you've been rejected a million times? Tell me if I'm going, if I'm jumping in too soon. No, you're right. You're right. Like, yeah. It's a little bit, it's a, it's a little bit hard to just put the essence lens on. It's an idea you have to sort of like let ruminate. But the other lenses that, that we're going to, what I call the beauty lenses, you can just put them right on and off. You can, you can do stuff that will just put you in that mode and you will be in that mode. So there's the opposite lens. The opposite of essence is purpose. It's like a man who wants to solve the problem and he wants to beat the light. And I'm as good as what I contribute. So someone with a purpose lens never stops to smell the roses or appreciate life and the level, and the level that they're on, but they can be highly successful and also very unforgiving. The right wing of politics comes from the purpose lens because they don't expect anyone to help you out. You got to get off your butt and start your own business. And if it fails, it fails. Nobody's going to be there to hold you up. Pick yourself up and try again. So the purpose lens causes a lot of growth, makes you work hard, but it's unforgiving. And men tend towards purpose and women tends towards essence. And people with the essence lens are constantly fighting with those who have the purpose lens. And they're fighting right now, like Republicans and Democrats, husbands and wives, bosses and employees. They're all fights over essence and purpose. They're fighting because one is essence and the other is purpose. They don't realize they're wearing these glasses and they're fighting. So do you you get that? Yes, I do. Okay. That's awesome. I didn't know if people would be able to get that. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's it's really easy for someone as dumb as me to comprehend. And I think it's... (laughs) Then we can move on. (laughs) (laughs) But it's also a great opportunity for dudes to wear sunglasses inside, which is a joke I've been trying to not say this (laughs) whole time. (laughs) (laughs) It's interesting that you're talking about all this because I was over at a friend's house yesterday. So it's a parenting thing, but I was at uh, my friend's house and... I was talking about just like, you know, being doubtful in moments of parenting and blah, blah, blah. And she was advising me and she had said she read something 30 years ago that had said to her, I forget the exact phrasing, but it was something like, whenever you're in moments of doubt, just put the actress's glasses on and just pretend that you are this amazing actress and you would act the way you want to. Like in any situation, if you don't know what to do or you're doubtful or fearful or you're of lower confidence, you suddenly just embody this actress who is acting out this part perfectly exactly how you would want it to go when it's not going your way and it kind of goes hand in hand with what we're talking about but it 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 really is about the way that you see yourself and you can see yourself any way that you want to that's that's what i i'm getting an understanding of what you're trying to say is that like you have the power to control the outcome of how you project yourself to other people you're like Two minutes ahead of me. You're yeah. saying exactly what I'm going to yeah. say. Sorry, go on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to give you lenses that unite essence and purpose. These are the beauty lenses. They have both aspects so that you don't have inner conflict. We don't want this constant fighting between essence and purpose. So you wear them and you won't be depressed. You'll love yourself and you'll be big and successful, an action taker at the same time. Right. Now, these lenses come from the Kabbalah, come from the, come from the level called beauty, 
and we'll see why they're called beauty. Some of these lenses relate directly to being shut down by a woman, and some of them relate to other breakdowns that can happen with people's happiness. Ready to get into the other beauty lenses? Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. The first lens is art. Everything is art. Even two-year-olds scribbling with crayons on this picture goes on the fridge. That's the essence of it. It's unchanging. But his picture won't be worth as much as the Mona Lisa. So that's the purpose of it. So there we see there's an essence to art. It's valuable no matter what. At the same time, some are more valuable than others. So it's a kind of a blend of both lenses. Now, you can see art in people all around you. In people's faces, when you're in line, you can people watch. Art fuses these opposites, and art is everywhere. And you just put on the art lens. You take any scene, like the rejection scene, when you went up to that girl, and you put a frame on it in your mind, or imagine it's being filmed. It's actually a beautiful scene, if you look at it as art. Now, this lens is really good for artists. You can paint a painting of the feeling you had when you were being rejected. And this will put you in perspective, and it's very therapeutic. It turns the negative into a win for you. You wind up with a new art piece that you never had before. And even if you're not an artist, break out the crayons. It's therapeutic to draw what you're feeling. Everything can be art, so just let it out on the piece of paper. And that's the first lens. So just look at everything like it's art and create art. And the second lens that I want to talk about is a music lens. So if you have one perfect note, that's like the essence. And if you have many pieces of an orchestra, that's like the purpose. And together, they make harmony. So find the music and what's happening. Let's say you're number 10 in a line at a movie theater, and you're going to miss the previews. So you're experiencing a bass line. It's all about the bass, though. A bass is a good thing. So think differently about it. Put on the music glasses. Looking at your life as music, you need those low points. The low points, you need them to be, you need the low points for the whole thing to be great and to have character. So if you struck out with a girl, listen to Megan Trainer. listen to that song. Right. If you're a musician, write a song in your head about being stuck behind people, being behind the eight ball and the frustration. Write a song about striking out with a girl. I actually wrote a song about striking out with a girl. And that song could make me famous one day. And, you know, that rejection just turned into something amazing. What I'm hearing you say overall is literally like a tactic that I use with my kids and that they tell you to use with your kids. It's just distraction and then displacement, right? Uh It's It's just taking your mind off of something so that you don't go into this negative spiral about being rejected so that... When those things happen, you can focus on music or you can focus on art. It's just, it's just not letting yourself sit with this negativity for too long. But it's not, Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, but it's not. What's even better than that? It's not taking your mind off of something. It's looking at the exact same thing that happened through a different lens. If you look at it, you can look at it as art or you right. could look at it as music. You're viewing right. the actual thing itself through a new lens. And that's what makes it so powerful. Which, and I, I love this. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I'm, actually, I forgot. How, where does the dancing come in? When do you start dancing? <laughs> I'll get to that. Okay. Well, actually, you know what? Why don't we take a quick break and we're going to come back with Rabbi Shmuel because I want to hear the rest of all of his explanation about these lenses because I think it's fascinating. So we'll be back in a minute. I think guys are misled with jewelry a lot for women because they see the ads on TV for, I won't say who, but it's not necessarily the coolest, bestest looking, most stylish, attractive jewelry. And if you want to have stylish, attractive jewelry that's quality and also affordable, you guys got to check out Majuri. I'm so excited because I'm getting a free piece of jewelry from them and I cannot wait. I've actually been seeing this brand name online a lot. And so the fact that I get to now have a beautiful ring from them is so exciting. So you can make your girl feel exactly the way they're making me feel right now, which is just ecstatic that I get to have some fine jewelry that's ethically sourced and high quality. My favorite part about this brand is if you go online on their website and you're not sure what to pick out, no matter what you pick out, it's going to be a good choice. And believe me, because I am the arbiter of good taste, you can (laughs) quote me on that. So go get your girl some good looking, high quality, amazing jewelry at Missouri.com slash ask women if you want 10% off your first order. That's dot com slash ask women for 10% off your first order. You know who's complicated? 
Women, women are complicated. That's why you're listening to this podcast. You know what's also complicated? Skincare. You know what doesn't need to be complicated? Skincare. And guess who makes it uncomplicated? T. Shanley. So you don't have to worry about finding another podcast to help you figure out something that's complicated like skincare and just let them handle it and then just focus more on our podcast and podcasts like ours to make women and dating less complicated. Am I making this too complicated? I think I am. So I'm gonna stop and just get right down to business. Tiege Hanley provides men with skincare products that you absolutely need, nothing more, nothing less. So you don't have to stand over your sink every night or every morning going, uh, okay, what should I use now? And then if I use this now, do I have to use it later? But then I have this other thing for now too. And da 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 it's all laid out and you don't even have to think about reordering it because you can do it as a subscription. It's so simple, so easy. And you are gonna thank me because your skin is going to look so good, you're not going to realize it could even look that good. You didn't know that if you scrub this like rock thing, it could turn into a diamond. Well, guess what? That's your face. And your face is going to say, wow, that was way easier than I thought it was going to be. I should have started this a long time ago. Their systems start at only $25, which is so cheap. But if you go to tijhanley.com slash askwomen, you'll get it even cheaper. That's T-I-E-G-E dot com slash askwomen. Believe me, women are looking at your skin. They're looking at it. Go to tige.com slash askwomen. All right, Rabbi Shemal, sorry to, to cut you off, but um, <laughs> please continue with the lenses. You got to pay the bills. So my mentor says, okay, this third lens is called the game slash competition slash challenge slash fun lens. I know it's a bit wordy, but my mentor says, live life like it's a game and live the game like it's your life. And you may have heard someone say something like that in your life. An example of yeah. this is like, let's say you're in an arcade game and you're shooting and shooting and you're getting shot at and shot at and you're out. And then there's a glitch and it keeps on going. So the essence lens tells us it's free play. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. So we can be totally relaxed. And the purpose lens says you're going to play your heart out because it's fun. So you're going to be totally into it. You're going to enjoy that free play time. Now, it can be that that can be your perspective on life. God loves you no matter what, like a parent loves a child. So don't take yourself too seriously. It's just a game. And because it's just a game, you're going to play your heart out. See, people have that problem. They think it's like life is like a game, so I don't take it so seriously. But that's, that's not true. If it's a game, you want to take it seriously because that's what makes the game worth playing. It's only, it's only fun if you all try your best. When you're not taking yourself too seriously, you're going to play your best. I think the best part about it being a game is that it means you can quit. Weird. That just turned into a suicide joke and it was not supposed to be. <laughs> it just worked its way there. Not if you follow the Bible, you can't. <laughs> There's no way out. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Now, so somebody who has this perspective of, the, of this lens is calm and unshakable and a major action taker. So, and for God, thoughts count. So you can see if you can tell how many positive and negative thoughts you're having and keep score and get into the competition and get competitive and try to beat your high score, try to have as many positive thoughts as you can. And like further with this game lens, think about this. I know, I don't know if you guys watch sports, but I used to watch a lot. And I often thought about the player that strikes out and then he immediately has to go play defense. So seconds after he failed, he's back out there. He can't be thinking about the strikeout, even though that was very embarrassing. He can't think about it for a second. He needs to go right on to the next challenge. So if he can do that, we could also do that. We can be like bouncing back immediately after a failure because he does it and we can do it. So we learn from sports and make what you're doing into a sport. See if you can guess when the next person in line in front of you is going to move. Time it on your watch. See your approaches as a dating game. You need to approach 10 women a day. That's 10 points. Another point if you get her number. Another point if you got a date. See each day when you got more points and watch for steady improvement. This is good for people that like making up challenges and games, but really everyone can do that. It can be a very simple challenge. And the next one is the story slash movie lens. Now, this lens tells you that what's happening is not real. 
It's just a story. But for the fun of the experience, we're going to get all into it again. Once again, we're going to get all into it. So write a short story in your mind or on your iPhone of how you wound up in this line at the movie theater and details, you can add in details that didn't happen to make it more interesting. You know, you're totally free to do that. If you struck out with a girl, that's a story you can tell your friends. I always say that every bad experience equals a great story on the back end. I, I yeah, and really that's why I have so many stories. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's it's true, it is true. Lens. That's the story lens. And uh, imagine how many stories of gurus started off with, I couldn't get a date, I kept getting rejected, I was short, I had acne, I had a beer belly. Yeah. And yet, they became the person who not only gets girls, but makes a living teaching others how to get girls. Marnie, you have your stroke story, and I'm sure you have many other stories that led up to your greatness that you have achieved, right? I do, yes. I thought you were going to continue complimenting me. I didn't know what <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I do. I that was your cue. Okay, that's, that, that's just like the very end of what happens because of the result of all of the anxiousness and uncomfortableness and insecurities. But, but yeah, that's, yeah, you're right. Nobody is like, not an expert or I don't consider mine myself either, but like nobody is teaching other people with a story of everything was perfect when I was younger. <laughs> I was beautiful. I got anything that I wanted. And now I want to teach you how to get the same thing. Like no, <laughs> nobody has that story. You're right. Who would you be without that story? You know, you would not be the Marnie that we all know and love. Aww. It's yeah. just, it makes you who you are. It, it, it makes you great. Thank you. And every guru has their story. There's not one guru that doesn't have a story of woe. Yeah. And they wouldn't have that story if they didn't fail first. And nobody would listen to them without a story. Right. So you can be the next person with a story like that. And when you're failing, think about that. This is, this is your story. This is the beginning. And it maybe ends with a happily ever after. Now, yeah, I'll, failure is the first step to success. Yeah, it is. So I'll give you the example of Shark Tank. Now, you might all watch Shark, Shark Tank, but you might not know that for the first yeah. three years that it was on TV, Kevin O'Leary said maybe a cat washed it. The show did nothing for like three years. Now, you could, you, oh. you, you could be Shark Tank. You could be a Shark Tank. You're just as good, but your moment didn't arrive yet. So sometimes it just takes time for your moment to arrive. And these people, the Shark Tank people, are billionaires. So they knew that you have to keep going through the failure to succeed. And now look at what a hit that show is. Those were billionaires. They understood what failure was all about. And they knew they had to keep going, that it will be great. They knew they were great. And they just needed the, you know, the right moment to arrive. Yeah. The story could be a tragedy and you never succeed, but that's still a story. Now we watch movies and we enjoy them. So God watches us. And he enjoys us. Why can't we live that in our interactions today? Why can't we pretend that we're like a lead actor in a movie? It's just a story, one bigger, one smaller. But who cares if a novel is like long or short? Right. It's just what, matter, what matters is that it's a story and how good it is. And because it's a story, because it's fun, you want to get totally involved. And a story needs imperfect people doing imperfect things in imperfect ways, succeeding anyway, sometimes, sometimes not. Do you think your situation can't be a story? Do you think your situation can't be art? Well, Kristen, we have a common love here. One of the greatest shows ever proceeded on the premise that even nothing is something. The show about nothing. Yes! <laughs> Seinfeld. Woo Seinfeld made a TV show about things that could happen to anybody, and they make it hilarious, and it has lit up millions of souls. So well, that's, that's so funny. I actually wrote a thing today for my website saying how boring is actually interesting. And I didn't even think about it in that sense of Seinfeld, yeah. nothing is something. But I really think boring is just the perception of self. Like you perceive yourself to, not you specifically, but you perceive yourself to be mundane because that's what you do every single day, but to someone else because it's different, that's interesting. So it's perspective. And so it's the same as like making something from nothing because really it's all something and it's all interesting. It is. Well, it's funny because another parent wrote this to me because we were talking about whether or not to get our kids these, these 
watches that have gains, blah, blah, blah. So we were talking about like the importance of boredom. And so he had said to me, my daughter and I often talk about the importance of boredom and how boredom allows the brain to have a moment of downtime to build bridges between all of the interesting things that she is learning and experiencing. And that this is when creative ideas get built. Kind of a baseline. And yeah. you never have to be bored. You always have your thoughts. You could always be writing a song or coming up with an idea for a piece of art or whatever you do, you, you always have your thoughts. And your thoughts can always be interesting. Yeah. I'm going to go a little faster with the lenses now. The next one is an experience. So that experience is appreciating something for what it is, which is both an essence and a purpose. It's very deep. It can work even when you're depressed. You can just be like, wow. This is what depression feels like. I'm experiencing life. Life is amazing. It's just a way to get like a third party perspective on anything that's happening. And it puts it into a zone where the dangerous emotions are not there. As a third party observer, you're not hurt. You're just watching someone get hurt. And that's just watching a slice of life. So an experience is one of the most important lenses. I love it. And the next one, also for Kristen, is a joke. The next lens is the joke humor lens. The humor in humor, you don't take life seriously. So that's its essence. And yet humor is really sneaky. It shines a light on life like nothing else. There's like a lot of truth to humor. It has a purpose. It really has a purpose, even though at the same time, it's not serious. Man, that girl picked me up and body slammed me. That was epic. You have to be able to laugh at yourself. And that's great for a stand-up comedian, but everybody can find humor in their own way. Well, laughing is almost like dancing in that sense of, I mean, you can laugh when you're maniacal or angry or something, but in general, when you're laughing, it's the same judge that's going on as when you're dancing or when you want to dance. Mm-hmm. It's like the same chemicals, I would imagine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The easiest way to get happy, I mean, there are certain things that are just so stupidly easy to do. I mean, if you you strike out with a girl and you listen to music, you'll be happier than you were before you listened to music. And if you watch your favorite comedy show, if you watch Seinfeld or whatever makes you happy, it will lift you out of your depression somewhat. So using these lenses could be just as simple as turning on some music or turning on your favorite show or movie. And the next one, which Marnie talks about a lot in her emails and all dating coaches really do, is the lesson lens. Like, what if you look at everything like it's a lesson? Now, it already happened, so there's no more danger of anything changing for the worse. And when nothing changes, you know that's the essence lens. At the same time, we should suck the marrow out of the experience, really analyze it, and that's its purpose. So if you got rejected, say, well, I learned the stage of approaching. I'll learn from the rejection that I should do things this way and not that way. So next time I'll get a full conversation and the next time I'll get a number and then a date and you're learning every step of the way. It's all just a lesson and failure is just a part of that success. Yeah. And I'm going to jump in with a really, really quickly gross story about learning. If everyone would like to hear about my colonoscopy, I would like to uh, interject with that real quick. Yeah, I had a colonoscopy last week. I'm a 50 year old man. My mom just did that. My mom just did that. Well, it's horrific and it's a learning experience. So you don't know going into something. So I had my appointment scheduled at 2 30 in the afternoon for my colonoscopy. And if I had known, because I'd never done this before, I would have gone for a morning appointment because then I had to stretch how long I hadn't eaten what? to 2 30. So basically, I hadn't eaten for about 48 hours. Oh my God. And so That's something you learn once you do something. But from the outside, before I ever did it, I would think, no, I think I got it. Seems pretty simple. Go in at 2.30 for an appointment. What could what could be the big deal? And done. But then as the more experienced person coming out the other side, no pun intended, (laughs) you realize, oh, oh, okay, there's other facets and things that I didn't know from my inexperienced point of view. So when guys aren't approaching women, they don't know all of those things that they're learning that will be better for the next time they get a colonoscopy. Like, don't take four Dulcolax if you haven't pooped in four days. Just saying. (laughs) You might be a little sick. So yeah, so it's all a learning process. And I love the, I love that shade or that, those, that lens. Cause I, I'm learning that as I go in my life is just as everyone else is. 
Yeah, that's a lens. And you could have higher thoughts about lessons. You know, a religious person would want to know, what is God teaching me from this lesson? So maybe from the rejection, he wants to teach you something more global. He wants to teach you to be the best you can be, you know, bouncing off of failure and get better at picking yourself up after failure in general. And now you're getting closer to God because you're realizing that he's not trying to hurt you. He's trying to teach you. And you can learn from everything. Everything carries a lesson, even a flower or a car accident. You just have to think about it. These are the universe's lessons or God's lessons, whatever you prefer. But it's someone smarter than you. Reality is smarter than you. So you got to learn from reality. And then there's the lens called gratitude. Look at all the things going right in my life. I'm in 2020. I'm living the most prosperous age of all in all of history. So why aren't we the happiest generation in all of history? Because we don't take notice and think. I have my family. I have my health. I have my car. I have my sister or whatever. Find the good points, even if they're small. Every situation can have gratitude. So my mic is not working. You can be angry that it's not working, and I paid a lot of money for that. Or you can be grateful that I have a fancy mic, and it will get fixed. So every single situation has these two sides. You have the gratitude side or the non-gratitude side. Make the choice if you want to be happy or you don't want to be happy. You can look at it one way or the other. A little anecdote is that once... It didn't happen, but it's just a nice thought. Once a man died, and he was the most awful person that ever lived. And at his funeral, they were just waiting for someone to come forth and give a eulogy to say something nice about him, and nobody is coming forward. So the the rabbi says, does anybody have anything good to say about this man? And there's silence for like two minutes. Finally, this old man gets up from the back of the room, and he says, I got something. And he's like, is it positive? He's like, yes, it's positive. Okay, go ahead. He says his brother was worse. Oh my God, that's amazing. That's uh, that's hilarious. (laughs) Now he could look at that as, well, well, he's dead, but he can look at it as, well, at least I had a brother, right? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Look at it positively. That's exactly right. That's that's exactly what I'm saying. You can think about, you can think about how much worse it could have been and be grateful, or you can focus on how bad it is. That's totally your choice. You You choose if you want to be happy or not. Like people say, I I told you, this is happiness you can turn on like a light switch. You you can really turn that on and off. You can put on that lens on and off. Like people say, when you got your car bashed in, they say, at least you have your health. That's actually true. And Jews thank God for their health every morning. That's part of their morning prayers because it makes you a lot happier. And my mentor says that good surrounds all of us and bad surrounds all of us. And you choose what you want to focus on. So is it the mic's not working or the fact that I have a mic? Which one is it? What's it going to be? It's your choice. Now, yeah, yeah. You don't like that? And no, I do. I just, it makes you man up. It makes you really, you know, be an adult. Like I want to whine and I want to complain, but it does nothing for me. It does nothing for the world. It does nothing for anyone except maybe add some humor to the experience maybe that's what you can pull from it but it's it's you have to have this level of maturity to be able to implement all of these lenses yeah yes like i'm bitching right now in silence i'm so mad (laughs) (laughs) because your mic isn't right your mic isn't working and we're hearing your email dings why are you fighting keep poking the bear it makes me upset um but no, I hear you. Like even every time that you say it, where I do maybe let my mind go to, oh, I wish I had a mic right now. I am going to the more funny space or positive space. I'm like, okay, I'll get it fixed after this show. It's not that big a deal. Yeah, and at least you have the money to buy a mic, so that's a blessing. There's a blessing there. Yes, that's true. You gotta always look on the bright yeah. side. So the, the, all of this, I know, I don't know if you're done with the, the lenses yet, but all of this is really just reframing, and you're giving options on how to reframe and you have to choose which yeah. option is best for you. You can laugh at it. You can look at it from a third party. You can see the good side of it. Have, if there's a story behind, like there are wonderful ways to reframe. And as when people say to reframe a situation, it's difficult to decide on how you want to do it. So you get locked and lost in it. But these are all wonderful suggestions of different ways that you can review a situation. Yep. Yeah. Review. 
How does someone do that if they're so accustomed to thinking one way and that one way being negative or cynical? How do you reprogram that that line in your brain that all the river that's flowing through your brain that's already been worn in, you know? Yeah. It's just like a, it's like a weak muscle. You got to get in the gym and work it out. And then after a year, it'll become nice and bulky or whatever you want it to be. But like you, you got to work out that muscle. You got to just have like one good thought after another, after another, take it one thought at a time until you get yourself out of hell. Yeah. It's why a lot of people like, what are the famous couples counselors? I forget their names again, but why they came up with this concept of, you know, doing three statements of appreciation at the end of every single day towards your significant other. It's so that, you know, you may be thinking all these negative things during the day about them, but, but just being able to have something positive in front of you and having to think about like, oh, there actually is, there are great things about you and you're wonderful. And just saying it to the other person, how, how it totally transforms a marriage and relationship and starts you guys fresh because you end on a good note and start off with a positive. Like being able to work your brain to that positive direction is an exercise because, you know, sadly for a lot of people, going to the negative is easier. There are probably like actual neural connections that are being formed when you have these good thoughts and, you know, they will strength strengthen when you repeat the thought over and over again, uh, like like reps in a gym, it will strengthen and it will become part of your brain. Your brain will can actually change. It's called neuroplasticity. Yeah, that's your brain. why my visualization program, or just visualizations in general, are so helpful because you do, you start to, to reconnect neurons in your brain to see things differently. You're reprogramming your brain to view you and view the world differently. It's so true. Your brain changes. You can change it. Yeah. Yeah, you can change it. You have the power to change it. So I love that. I, I do want to touch on the one thing before. I know that we're, we're still on this, the, the lenses, but I, I do want to cut to the the topic of Kabbalah and sex that you had brought up before the show had started. And maybe just that briefly, or if you think it's a big conversation, we can have you back on the show to talk about it because I thought it was really interesting. I'm out of 10 lenses. I'm on number nine. So if we just do two more, then we'll get oh, to no. it. I'll have you come back on the show and talk about it because I, li- I like these lenses. Okay, what's what's the last lens? We're in the second to last. Oh, second to last. Okay. The second to last lens is a sacrifice. Now, this is more serious and pious, but it's seriously powerful. If you say to yourself, I'm sacrificing my ego and I'm becoming less selfish because of this, then that will have a powerful impact. Sacrifice is one of the most powerful things we can do. And the more you do it, the happier you are. If you sacrifice more, you need less and less, and what you have becomes more and more appreciated. So if you get rejected, think of it this way. You're taking your pride and you're giving it up to God as a sacrifice. That's what the animal sacrifices in the Holy Temple were all about anyway. It says if you didn't have intent, if you didn't really sacrifice your pride, then you didn't bring a sacrifice. That's what it was all about. So if you're in line at the grocery store and you're missing your meeting, you're losing your pride. So you can just lose it or you can give it as a sacrifice and suddenly it becomes empowering. Now, this is like the best for last, best for last lens here. The wonder slash magic slash miracles lens. Like a six-year-old at Disney World feels wonder, you can feel that all the time. It helps when you believe in God, but truly anyone can do it. Look at the popcorn machine at the theater. It runs on electricity, which is like magic. You can't see it, but it powers it a thing with tremendous force, but you can't see it. It's crazy if you think about it. How could something you can't see be that powerful? And you can't you can't see what's making your heart beat. You can't see what's making your brain make pictures and videos. A tree growing is new mass all the time. That's the miracle of creation. So express wonder at how big the building is that you're in and how it all holds together so well. Change up these lenses for the situation. So that the, the, I, I just gave you 10 you can use. They have the essence and the purpose, and they work wonderfully, and most of them are pretty easy to implement. It, it could be just a matter of turning on some comedy show or some music show. That's one way to get into those lenses. With practice, though, you'll become a maestro, and you'll have the most fascinating, uplifting, meaningful, and happy and successful days you ever had feel free to dance. That's where the dancing comes in that you asked for. This is the Kabbalah. Now you're tracing events up towards God. You realize he didn't mean to hurt you. He meant to give you meaning. 
and you just didn't have the right glasses on. Personally, I know what it means to strike out. I've been rejected by girls plenty, but worse, maybe worse, I recently had my bank account like cleaned out. A contractor I trusted billed me a ton of hours on a freelancer website, and I didn't even know it was possible for that to happen, but it happened, and thousands of dollars were gone. Now, I'm just saying... Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> afraid to do things to rabbis like what <laughs> like i would think you'd be protected that's crazy yeah it can happen so you know these lenses save me they save me on a daily basis you know it, it takes a second like i gotta get my bearings i gotta realize okay here's what happened maybe i'll write it down here's exactly what happened and here's what lens i'm gonna use to look at the situation and uh things get better that's all i can say things definitely get better so how do you get your bearings? Like you said, you know, you do have to take that second, but what if someone doesn't have the self-control or the discipline to say, wait a second, I'm going out of left field here with this. It's kind of getting silly. How do you reel it back in? How do you get reminded to do that? I start by just writing out the problem. You know, whatever is going on, sometimes very often it's like five things going wrong at the same time. So I'll take out a Google Doc, and I'll just write down exactly what's happening. I'll be like, here's the crap that's going on in my life. And I just write it out. And so I know this guy's not getting back to me. And I don't know when that's going to happen. And this guy stole from me. And, you know, I write it all down. And then I decide on a lens. And I use the lens to look at that situation. Say like, look, I'm the hero, man. I'm going to be the hero. I'm going to kick ass in this story. And it's like, you, you just make it whatever you want it to be. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's perfect. All right. That's a perfect place to end because I, I, I love all of it. Well, actually, I do want to know about the dancing. When does the dancing come in? How, why are they dancing? Because they use these lenses? Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yes. This is from the Kabbalah and they use these lenses. And for them, it's a totally godly thing. I'm, I'm giving it to you like mostly as a secular thing. But if you inject God into the picture, it becomes more powerful and uh, more interesting. They dance because they feel so close to God. They, they, they feel like the circumstances that, he, they, that he's given them are for their own good and for, for lessons and for meaning and for stories. And when you view everything like a story or a music or an art piece, then everything becomes joyous. It just it brings out a joy in life. It's like wine. It brings out a joy in life. And it's so amazing that like in so many religions, dancing used to be like a sin. And in Judaism, really? yeah, yeah, like, you know, I don't know, of course, I have no idea actually who, but you, well, it was in Footloose. right, the movie Footloose, Footloose was like, you couldn't dance, dance in the town. Yeah, it leads to sex and drugs and alcohol. Mm-hmm. So don't dance. Right. And so it's amazing that Judaism <laughs> is so based on dancing, whereas other ones were super anti dancing. But any religion really should be anti-dancing when you dance like my mom. Like that should just be <laughs> a rule. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no that's cats that's dancing. Right. That's a that's a rule. But right. <laughs> that well, that was awesome, Rabbi. That was absolutely fantastic. I I wasn't sure you know what direction this was going to go in, but I was excited to have you on the show. And I think that people who are listening to this episode are really going to benefit and become Jewish the lens. <laughs> and become, oh, just be happy crossed. everybody just be happy Get them all. Uh, <laughs> but yeah no I, I really appreciate this and I appreciate the fact that you did keep saying you know if it's not God it's it's the universe if it's not God it's this like I I, I really appreciate that, that you can see that there is there are other sides for other people so sure. I think that that was awesome for sure. um, but I know you have a podcast right yeah how can people listen to your podcast you go to lightuntothenations.com, lightuntothenations.com. And I just came out with another book, which you can get at allinforgod.com, allinforgod.com. Like, I like it. You were wonderful. I definitely want to have you back so we can talk about the Kabbalah of sex. Because okay. uh, what you were explaining to me before was really interesting. Again, like... There are certain times when I hear you speak, I'm like, oh, I wish I was more religious. I really do. I would like to have that belief in a higher power. I just, anyway, that's a separate conversation, but I, I just think it's wonderful. So really? thank you for just, coming on. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs>
Let's do it. Nah. <laughs> Maybe one day when I get older. But thank you so much for coming on to this show. You were wonderful. New episodes of the Ask Women podcast come out every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. I also post on YouTube. So go listen slash watch on YouTube by going to youtube.com slash Marnie Kinneris. You guys are awesome. We'll see you next week. <laughs>